The Dark Knight watches over his city in a new release from Diamond. Here's your look at the Diamond Select Toys as the gallery statue of Batman. In the name of his slain parents, Bruce Wayne wages eternal war on the criminals of Gotham City. He is vengeance, he is the knight, he is Batman. One of the most iconic fictional characters in the world, Batman has dedicated his life to an endless crusade, a war on all criminals in the name of his murdered parents who were taken from him when he was just a child. Since that tragic night, he has trained his body and mind to near physical perfection to be a self-made superhero. He's developed an arsenal of technology that would put most armies to shame, and he's assembled teams of his fellow DC superheroes like the Justice League, The Outsiders, and Batman Incorporated. This PVC diorama of Batman is based on his appearance in DC Comics. It is made of high quality grade plastic and features detailing, sculpting, and paint applications. Is there a specific superhero that you guys look forward to the most when there's a new release in a statue or figure? For me, it's easily hands down the Cape Crusader. Anytime there's a new release of Batman via statue, via action figure, or via just collectible as a whole, I get the most excited for. I think of all the superheroes in the world of comics. That's just me. If you guys are inter interested, by the way, picking this one up for yourself, uh, you should be able to now find the gallery statue of Batman at your local comic book stores. A uh, big thank you, by the way, to the folks over at Diamond Select who are nice enough to send the sample that we're looking at in this review my way. And uh, like I said, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you should be able to find it now at your local comic book stores. 10.5. We didn't lose track of what needed to be done first and foremost, and that is measuring off to the very top of Batman's head. Just in case you're curious as to how much space this statue occupies. The answer to that question would be 10 and a half inches in height. And in centimeters, that works out to be 26.7, almost 27 centimeters tall. Until you physically pick up this statue for yourself, quite literally picking this statue up for yourself, you won't realize how heavy it is. I mean, even looking at it, it would be hard to gauge it through the monitor here, wherever you're watching this review from, how heavy the statue is. Take my word, though, for it. This Batman statue could be one of the heaviest gallery statues of the PVC variety that Diamond Select have released. If not all, the weight is up here, though. None of the weight is really localized down below, and I'll show you why. Let's pick up the statue right now and look at this really stellar display bottom. It sort of is depicting Batman standing up at the top of what looks to be like a building rooftop. And you would imagine like the smaller buildings of Gotham City would be beneath him as he's looking out across the cityscape. The display base is really rather interesting because again, like you've got Batman perched across. I mean, he's got one foot on the back of the display base and then he's got one foot perched the top of what I can only really describe as this kind of goblin-like gargoyle. It's not something you normally expect. Usually when you think of Batman or you think of Spider-Man or you think of any other character that's on top of a building and he's looking across, don't you normally think of the more beak-like or bird-like uh, statues that they're standing on top of? This sort of adds the more gothic end of things, and I really like the fact that they went with this choice of gargoyle. It's not quite cats. It kind of looks a little bit like a Black Panther 
kind of looks a little bit like a bat. You can see the smaller wings behind it and giant talons on the front. It's an amalgamation of things all put together, equaling a rather interesting and again, rather gothic-like uh, interpretation of a gargoyle. Really like that quite a bit. The coloring, and let me just tip this upside down for that. I'm gonna hold Batman so nothing comes loose from itself. You can see how little plastic is really being utilized right here. This is a completely open cavity, as well to be said for the front of the gargoyle as well. Not not really as much as the back here. You can see how it's been connected in place. These would be the connector points of which Batman's feet would attach to. So again, like there's really not a lot of plastic at all there. If not all the plastic is this chunky guy right here. Not chunky from his size and the build of his body. There's no fooling here that Batman is a quite fit looking superhero, but he's chunky in the sense of how much PVC plastic would have been incorporated into him. Some of the other things I really quite like about the display base before we kind of get into Batman himself is I like the different texturing that they incorporated into it. On the side, you sort of get these little, little line slots. And then as you can see with the different brick work, each of the bricks seem varied from one another. Here we have some nice notable cracks, some little indentations here, and further more of that in the front here. The coloring of plastic, I mean, you already know what the coloring of plastic is. It's kind of like a dark gunmetal gray really by adding this dry brushing of lighter gray really do a lot of these details stand out. Again, the cracks on the face of the gargoyle, the indentations and the cracks and the damaged sections of the brick are all showing well because they add that dry brush of gray over top of it. It's very successful, a very simple means of adding a higher tone with the lower darker tone of the plastic underneath that. One little breakup of plastic coloring is these little, uh, they're not, they're kind of like the tops of a fence, but really how small they are. I mean, there's not really covering off much of anything. It's probably just like guard railings just to make sure that you don't step over the edge and leap off the building. It's a different color altogether. It kind of reminds me of smaller CN Towers if you live here in Toronto. The CN Tower sized shaped spikes are of a, the same PVC plastic, but they're a little bit more fragile. They're a thinner plastic and you wanna be a little bit careful that uh, you don't snag and clip these. In fact, I would say if you do pick this one up for yourself, and I would recommend that you do, just double check that all of those individual spikes are still completely intact, even the ones behind the gargoyle itself. You can see and hopefully see with the help of this camera that there's some nice weathering and rusting that they've added to the top sections of the spike. That's a really nice touch. I like that. Again, there's not a lot of plastic being utilized here, but boy, oh boy, is that a successful looking display base. Speaking of successful, how successful is the sculpting here of Batman? This would be a, something I would almost expect to be on the cover page of a new Batman comic release. I mean, certainly this pose, I'm sure I would have seen at least one time or not through the pages of one of the DC comic Batman releases. It's such a cool looking pose of Batman. As I said, perched atop of the building. I think when the fair time comes and the time will be coming soon of when I display this bad boy on the shelf, I'm more likely, I think, to display it from the side and not necessarily from the front. The side is just giving me a really neat profile to it. Not only do you see the back foot of Batman very stably footing the Cape Crusader on the back, stabilizing him while he looks off to the city, but you get the background effect of having the one bit of the, the cape, you know, almost like a wing itself sticking out from the back of Batman. And then you've got the foreground of the shapes and different just elements added to the front of the cape section here. I really, again, think this is going to be the way I'm going to display the statue here. This sculpting of Batman, and specifically the pose that they put him in, could be one of Diamond's finest. Although, I do want to play the game, if I can, of what if. Oh, we're going to be playing games now in these reviews? If I could play the game of what if, though, as good as this sculpt may be, I ask the question to myself, and potentially maybe to you guys as well, how would this sculpt look if Batman's mouth was closed? Now, this is something I want to mention, only because as good as this statue is, the one thing that keeps drawing my eyes up is this section right here. Batman's face is quite visibly angry. And you could easily argue the point that over the pages of Batman's comic runs over the years, Batman has been angry more than one time. But I think it's because if you look at the teeth, they are outlined individually, each individually outlined by paint. As a result of that, you're drawing more attention to the fact that the teeth are... are 
visibly there than I think if the panel lining was just a shade bit lighter. Now, don't get me wrong, this is where angles come into play. If you look at the statue from the side, oh, that's such a good looking pose. But if you look at the statue from the side, the teeth actually work, as opposed to having Batman's mouth completely shut. However, you look at Batman straight on, I feel it doesn't work as well. Again, if I tilt it to the side, looks really good, doesn't it? And when we look at it again from the front, maybe it's just because the paint, just because the outlining on the teeth is so strong. If they had pulled that back just slightly, maybe one or two shades lighter, the teeth would obviously still be there, but I think that maybe they, they wouldn't look as rough or maybe as profound as they end up looking at here on this statue. It's the only one thing, the only one thing I think I would change. But again, like if you look at it from the side, it doesn't look bad at all. I mean, like the teeth even add a little bit extra something to Batman. It's maybe again, just looking at it from the front that's throwing me off. Certainly what throws you off as well, at least it threw me off when I picked up the box for myself. I feel like the back of the box doesn't do proper justice, pardon the pun, if you will. It doesn't do justice for how good this statue is actually painted. Uh, the back of the box seems almost a little bit more blurry or distorted. You'll see it soon enough. I'll probably show that the back of it in final looks. But the paint is really quite good on this piece. I mean, the choice that they went with on the blue, it's kind of a really dark, dark, almost gray based blue. And I think it works extremely well for a modern take on Batman. Everything on him is a more modern color scheme, right down to the fact that his utility belt has the larger pockets and it's gone away from the yellow color scheme, more in favoring of a more modern, lighter brown. Works quite well on this particular figure. Even like the costume itself, while still keeping to traditional blues and grays, you can definitely see there's a lot of extra stuff happening here. Specifically, I want to draw the attention that I can, hopefully, to Batman's chest. You can see the basket weave texturing that they added to the suit itself. Even like the bat emblem, completely omitting that yellow oval in favor of just a solid bat emblem. It's been raised from the rest of his chest and you can see there's some scratches and little indentations to it. There's no fooling the fact that Batman is an in-shape character. I mean, the fact that the costume is hugging tightly as much around the musculature of Batman as it is, you really do see like a lot of the stellar sculpting that they were able to incorporate, really fully understanding how a muscular body should look. Even like the costume itself, you can see like little sections where Batman may have repaired his costume. There's some little rips and uh, probably sections where knives may have attacked him. You can see a couple of little slashes and stuff like that on the costume fabric itself. And if, even if you look on his bicep, he's got a little bit of that happening there as well. Normally when you get Batman figures or Batman statues in this case, Batman's cape generally just drapes behind him or he usually fans it out in that rather trademark Batman bat shape. This is something completely different. There's a lot of layers to this particular cape. Not only is it really nice, nicely textured, almost mimicking the actual skin of a real bat wing. Again, you can see like little scratches and indentations to it, but I really like how Batman is holding his cape. He's almost very aggressive in the way that he's holding the sides of the cape, almost even, well, he's forming fists, which I think adds to the intensity of this particular sculpt. But you don't see it too often where Batman's holding the cape the way that he is. It adds for a lot of extra layers and different things happening to the cape that you normally would not expect. Again, natural happening for most of these statues, the fact that Cape just kind of drapes down like this and forms itself off into the familiar Batman bat points of his cape. But here you've got something very different. It pulls itself around, Batman's grabbing it, and I guess the excess is coming down. It jars a bit looking at it from this way, but I think it looks a little, it makes a little bit more sense when you see it this way. Loving again, the way that it just naturally drapes. You can see the way it naturally falls itself down and bunches and wraps itself around itself. And even how right around Batman's hand here, you can see how it pulls itself up. I'm not really sure how specifically it's pulling itself up, especially the way that this looks like it's a separate piece. Well, it is a separate piece right here than the rest of Batman's cape, but from a distance, and I think that's the most successful pull off from a distance and most definitely from the side. Boy, oh boy, that's one fantastic looking sculpting of Batman.
Okay, so everybody, everybody, if you can, if you don't mind me asking, focus your attention on the right side of this screen. On the right, drawing your attention to it, you'll see the black turntable spinning around the new gallery statue release of the Cape Crusader Batman. Oh, that's a nice looking statue. Now on the left side, if everybody can just focus their attention to the left side of the screen, don't worry, there's no test involved after this. If you look at the left side of the screen and the box artwork depicting the very same statue, same pose, same sculpt, same Batman, boy oh boy, is that ever a night and day difference. There's something about the box artwork which normally would be the opposite. The prototype images are always better painted than the ones are mass re retail released. But in this case, it's actually an opposite. The back box artwork, I think, doesn't do any bit the justice of the real physical thing. It distorts the detailing on Batman, really washes the gray into the blues, and you really don't even see the emblem standing out like you do in the real physical statue. Even like the grimmest face on Batman looks much more profound on the back box artwork than it does physically getting in hand. This is one of the beauties of checking out video content before you decide you want to spend your hard-earned dollars to pick up a statue for yourself. If you looked at just solely that image, if I looked at solely just that image, I don't think I would be as head over heels for the statue as I am now physically seeing this in hand. And again, that's one of the benefits of checking out these videos before you guys decide to pick up the pieces for yourself. I quite like this Batman. I quite like this Batman a lot. If I closed my eyes, and I've said this in previous reviews, if you close your eyes, it doesn't have to be my eyes, but if you close your eyes and you envision one of your favorite superheroes in a pose and a look that you would say, that is that character, what would it look like? I mean, obviously it may not specifically be Batman, it could be Superman, it could be Flash, it could be Hawkman, it could be anybody, it could be Elongated Man. If I was to close my eyes and picture what I picture to be a perfect looking Batman, normally it would be Norm Brayfogle's work, He's one of my favorite, all-time favorite Batman artists. But I would depict a Batman looking very similar to this, this specific pose, especially looking at from the side. I think Diamond Select have done really one of the best services to the Cape Crusader in this statue release. The only thing, again, that draws my attention, and I, again, I'm still looking at right now, is the grimace look on Batman's face, the visible teeth, which from, a, from the front... I think is more noticeable and jarring than it is from the side. From the side, it looks perfect. This may be a contender for why you want to display statues sometimes in certain angles. A Batman like this, I think is more effective from the side, maybe from this side, or give it a few seconds from the other side. Straight on looks just as good, but it does draw more attention to the outlined individual teeth, which it doesn't look as bad from the side. Could the this Batman potentially of playing the what-if game. Could he have had a closed mouth? Potentially. Could it have improved the statue? Potentially. But again, from the side and the way that I'm going to be displaying the figure, this is probably one of the perfect Batman examples of a statue. And again, it's at an affordable means. The gallery statue line as a whole is a more affordable entryway into picking up statues for yourself. If you've asked yourself, and I've certainly been asked by you guys, the viewers, uh, how do you get into statue collecting? What's a good way to get into statue collecting? I generally say look to the avenue of PVC statues. It's much more affordable than the poly resin statues, for example. And Diamond Selector are doing one of the best uh, gallery, well, best statues as around, around in the gallery line. You get posed characters. Some of the best poses come from the gallery statue releases. In a case like Batman here too, this Batman looks fantastic and it's about a price point of about 60 to $70. So again, it won't break the bank if you guys are looking to get into statue collecting and you always get worried, I know I get worried when you look at the price tag of some of the larger premium statues are in the thousands of dollars. I kid you not, in the thousands of dollars. Gallery statues certainly are the affordable and the smarter route to go if you want to start building up your statue collecting. If you are looking to start your collecting with the Cape Crusader, I would recommend highly picking up the gallery statue release of Batman. This is probably one of my favorites. Not that they've done a lot of Batman statues, but this is definitely one of my favorite Batman statues that have been released. Just so happens to be released under the gallery line. Again, a big thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select. Uh, for providing the sample that you guys looked at in this review. What do you guys think of the new gallery statue release of the Cape Crusader? Not a bad statue at all. I really like this. Does the grimmest teeth bother you? 
that's a good question to pose you guys as well. Again, from some angles, from the side, it doesn't bother me at all. From the front, I think I notice it a little bit more. But man, oh man, what a neat looking statue, hands down. If you guys are new to this channel or a long time viewer, never got around to it, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. If you are also interested in checking out more from Diamond Select, of course you can head on over to their website at diamondselecttoys.com, but you can also check out their YouTube page because they have a YouTube channel where they can show up and coming releases before they hit store shelves. Talking a little bit about what something physically looks like in hand before actually going out and picking it up, can't beat the Diamond Select YouTube channel because again, you'll get a, an early sneak peek at some of the stuff that's going to be hitting toy and comic book store shelves. Again, stay tuned guys. Keep your peepers peeled because there's going to be a whole lot of statue reviews and other reviews coming soon to this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.